Come here, big guy. Uh, I brought something, a little something for you, Dave. You can be here. I got one right here. Sure, yeah. David, what is the one thing I'm against? Huh? Evil twinism in, in television. Uh -huh. How many times? Now you've heard me. I've spoken this before. Now, I'm not making this up. This is the grapevine, the spicy insider section. Read that about the new show from the producers of Falcon Crest and Knots Landing. Just read that part about the two women. It's called The Covenant. Mm -hmm. It is about twin sisters, one blonde and good, the other brunette and bad. Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad the writer's strike is over. Can you imagine what the A-team would be like without writers, huh? <laughs> Just a bunch of car crashes and senseless violence. <laughs> Terrible, it would be, certainly. Here's one on Friday, Street Hawk. Have you seen no, that? No, I haven't seen Ooh, Street Hawk yet. Well, you'd probably like that, wouldn't you? Uh, this, well, this is about a motorcycle that hires a human companion to fill in dialogue between car crashes. <laughs> you know why I don't like Street Hawk? It, I, it's a, a guy with a little wing-wing Honda. It's supposed to go 300 miles an hour. See, now, when I drive my Harley, people stop me and they go, Oh, gee, is that like the bike on Street Hawk? No, but this is like the Magnum on Dirty Harry. Get out of here. Oh, <laughs> it is annoying. Now, you, you, ride a, you ride a Harley because they give you those nice T-shirts, no, I would they guess. Don't. This is, do you like this T-shirt? Would you like one of these? Oh, yeah. I I'm can uh, pull one a few of strings to get you one of those. <laughs> sure, I can. There's one show I find the most embarrassing show. It was on last Thursday night, the People's Choice Awards. I don't know who these people are. Let's find them and take the freedom of choice away from them. <laughs> They did one good thing. They picked his best sitcom. They picked the Cosby Show, is the best, which is the best sitcom. This is, a, you know, actually the Cosby Show has been great to comedians, but because before Cosby got the show, the networks weren't interested in using comedians in sitcoms. Yeah. Now that he's, a, you know, that he's, he's proved it successful, suddenly they're coming to guys like me, like ABC. I'm reading for this show for them, and in it, I play a black middle-aged doctor with my. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's similar. It's kind of a spin-off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, there's a story in here on uh, Q ratings. Are you familiar with that? Well, not, not specifically. You Generally, know the Q... I know what they are. What the Q rating is, is everybody supposedly in Hollywood has a, has a rating based on their recognizability. It has nothing to do with talent or, or ability, just recognizability. That's sure. all it is. And they try to put sitcoms together based on the recognizability of stars. People that yeah. Americans know from Right, whatever. like according to the latest uh, Q rating survey, a hit sitcom would star Prince, Clara Peller, and Bernard Getz is the wacky neighbor. <laughs> The Wacky Neighbor. The Wacky Neighbor. Yeah, the Wacky Neighbor. Here's one, Miami Vice. Do you like that? That's kind of yeah, an interesting one. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You know what? I mean, come on. The guys, the guys drive Ferrari, they wear designer clothes. This is one of the few instances on television where the police actually earn more money than the cocaine dealers. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else there in the TV game? No, there's not much. Y you have any other interest besides watching television? You know what I did the other night? I, I, I know this is the yuppie thing to do. I thought I would try it. I played this Trivial Pursuit game. You ever played this? Yeah, I played it. Now, do you like it? Um, well... You know, you see, no, you see, that's exactly mine. You see, I feel guilty playing it. Because what you have here are a bunch of useless facts masquerading as knowledge. Yeah. You know? I mean, the 80s are really the only time a game like Trivial Pursuit could even be popular. I mean, you go back a hundred years, Thomas Edison, the guy would sit around in the dark to, to try to dream up the light bulb. George Washington Carver, I mean, the man was, how do you get more crops from one tiny seed? Now you got this vast pool of college-educated people, they sit around at night going, okay, what was Goober's middle name? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's stupid, it's terrible. <laughs> What was his middle name, just for future reference? I don't know what his yeah. middle name is. Uh, what about world affairs? Anything oh, in politics, politics uh, catch oh, politics. your fancy? This, uh... Well, now, that I guess the CIA is all upset about this Nicaraguan manual thing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they want to, they're they trying to figure out how they got caught. It's so easy to see how these guys got caught. Have you seen the manual, the whole back page, about the author? You know, there's a, a guy in a tweed jacket, leather patch, he's got his foot on a case of dynamite. Of course they're going to get caught. Then. Now they got this new thing, and they want to put a qualified teacher into space yeah. on the space shuttle. You know, we don't have enough qualified teachers on Earth as it is. <laughs> Why don't we keep the qualified teachers here? Send some of these crummy teachers into space. <laughs> I got a couple of shop teachers. I wouldn't mind being orbit in the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll check on the paperwork for that. We have to take a pause here. We'll be right back with Jay Leno, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, 
thing that... I, I feel sorry for these animals. Like I said, Oh, no, this is a no, great no, they dog. They have these products like Gaines Burgers. Have yeah. you seen this? This is a dog food shaped like a burger. <laughs> no, what is, is this supposed to save the dog the trouble of actually forming the patty himself? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, now, where, are you, where, where have you been? Where are you going to? What's, uh... Where am I All right, so you're down there for bike week. They what, is this, bike week. Is this your a, honeymoon? No, this is not my honeymoon. <laughs> they have a guy down there. They have a guy down there named Big Daddy Rat who runs this uh -huh. place called the Rat Hole. Oh, yeah. And every year, they have a contest where they elect Miss Rat Hole. They have their, <laughs> I'm and I was watching the contest this year, and I'm realizing, I'm saying to myself, this is an easy job. Because what could this woman possibly do to bring shame and dishonor to the title of Miss Rat Hole? <laughs> What can you do, maybe? Assassinate the president, become an Amway distributor? There's nothing you can do. <laughs> and you went to an auto show, you're telling me, right? Is that right, the other day? Yeah, we, we went to the New York City auto show. I was in Atlanta, ago. and they had an auto show, show down there, and they were advertising the radio. Come to the auto, auto show and see the Tom Selleck look-alike. Yeah. I mean, what, that was, <laughs> what do you say to a, a Tom Selleck look-alike? You know, it's like, gee, you know, you look a lot like Tom Selleck. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't go. I found a guy like me. I sent him down. He yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you're still riding with the pagans? Is that right? No, I'm not. No, just... uh, another remark, Dave, and your house may not be there tomorrow. Uh, now, tell me about your, uh, as always, Jay, uh, I'm sure you came fully prepared, what's fully armed. Beep? What's, what's your beef? What's me? What's riding me? Yeah, what's under these your skin? TV personalities. I'm sorry. These spokesmen for these products. You seen this guy, Chris Roberts for VIX? Huh? I'm not a doctor, oh, yeah, that, although yeah. I play one on TV. <laughs> not a doctor. Hey, pal, I seen your show. You're not even an actor. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> then there's more wonderful folks down there at 7-Eleven. You seen their ad? They show the guy getting up, driving to work on his yeah. way to work, has his first hot cup of coffee at 7-Eleven. <laughs> uh, what a terrific home life this guy makes. <laughs> You know, you go to any other store, they have a sign, have a nice day, come again soon, thanks for shopping here. 7 has got that little sticker, put it back, thief. <laughs> when you walk in, they got $10,000 worth of cameras watching 20 bucks worth of Twinkies. <laughs> and they always say, they always say they care about people. Give me an idea how much they care. You ever go into 7-Eleven, they have their handicapped parking across the street. <laughs> actually, actually, this is the best time to go to 7-Eleven, any time after midnight. Then it becomes like a Fellini casting call in this place, you know? All sorts of trolls and mutants wandering through the aisles. People with no birth records of any kind, you know? They, they, they always have some sort of a druid slumped over the register there. And, and there's always that nest of junkies festering in the cookie aisle. Look at it. You ever shine a light down a cookie aisle at 7-Eleven after midnight? It's like, get it, get it, get it. all scatter there. All the Malamars broken into. I saw a five-pound bag of sugar suck dry in there. When I I tell you, you know, you walk down the aisle and they got contraceptive foam on the same shelf as cheese whiz. <laughs> what do you want, honey? You want to make love? You want a cracker? What do you want? How can you need something whiz and expect people to buy it? You know, if I pick up a product and I see whiz on the label, I'm going to read those ingredients very carefully. Right? Exactly how much whiz is in there. It's out. Uh, Jay Leno will be in oh, Boston this week at you know, uh, Nick's fact, Comedy Stop. Yes, sir. That we added uh, we added two extra shows. No, two extra shows at uh, Nick's shows Comedy Stop, uh, Comedy Shop Stop. You know comedy what, David? Stop the writers, Boston. since they were off last, we got to go, Jay. I know, but they asked me to read this. The writers, oh, okay. they had some time off. They asked me to read this. this. Better they, be good. They we're had running nothing out of time. to write, and they said, Jay. I guess you're going to be at the Park West the 29th and then probably Clearwater, Florida on the 31st. And you'll like this place, Kisses. And Kisses. then the next day... a place called Kisses? And the next day I go to Cheek to Cheek. Oh, my God. And then God. next day I go to DeKalb, Illinois, to the Egyptian Theater. It sounds like you're in a Daggio dancer. And then I go to your hometown. I go to uh, uh, Indianapolis. Right. Well, nice to see you. Well, nice to see you, Dave. Thanks, Thanks for, for having being. me on. Well, well we got to go away book. here for uh, Space Night Energy. We'll be right back.